Hey guys. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I've been listening to Lion King soundtrack a lot. Um, the Circle of Light song. And today's sermon is going to be called um, Celebrating the Circle of Light. Let's pray. Father, I praise you, and I honor you, and I give you glory for what you're about to speak today, what you're about to do today. And I declare that you are going to speak mightily and do mighty things today through this sermon. And Lord, I declare that you are, you are God in all our lives, and as we go, through this life, I pray that you will show your presence strong where it needs to be shown. Help us where we need to be helped, or, wh or where we need to help ourselves. Give us the courage and strength to do so. Um, Lord, I pray that you will just be, be with us in a beautiful in a remarkable way this day. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hey guys, as I said, I've been I've been listening a lot to the Circle of Light from the Lion King and, and I and God gave me this title last night um, called Celebrating the Circle of Light and if you guys have been living under a rock and don't know what the Lion King is the Lion King is um, a Disney movie that came out in 1994, what I call the Golden Age of Disney, where um, um, Disney came out with a movie every year, and The Lion King was one of those in that collection, um, and at the beginning of the movie, there is a song called The Circle of Light. And when I post this on YouTube, I will put the song on my, on my page, and plus the Rachel's and Rhythms page, so that you can hear it. Mostly everybody has seen the movie, and it's a wonderful movie, not only for children, but for adults, too. I know many adults that say The Lion King is their favorite uh, Disney movie because the story is so compelling. It's about greed, jealousy, love, family, and what people will do for power. And thinking about just the song in the circle of life, it talks about how from the moment we open our eyes, we are a part of the circle of life and how life itself will move us through different stages. It says despair and hope, faith and love, but it will all, all It'll also move us through sacrifice, through pain, through destiny. It'll go, it'll go through stages of ups and downs and trials. And it says it's all part of the circle of life. And it, and it said we, we all go through it no matter what color we are, no matter um, what... Um, where, where our backgrounds are from, we all go 
most full of the circle of life of a few weeks ago. I I heard that Aaron Carter, the brother of Nick Carter, passed away at, at 34 years old. And when I heard the news, um, I immediately thought of Nick Carter. Um, if you guys don't know who Nick Carter is, he's one of the uh, five Backstreet Boys. He's been a Backstreet Boy since I think he was like 14 or 15. Um, and now he's like some, something about 40, 42 or something like that. He's been a master for all the time, all that time. And then his brother um, died of um, drug complications and mental illness. And Nick Carter is part of the, one of the hugest one bands in the world. And as I was, as I heard Aaron's death, I thought of my own brother's death in 2017, um, and my own sister's death in 1989. Um, for those of you who don't know, I had two siblings uh, pass away. Um, and as I was thinking of this, as I heard of Aaron Carter's death, the first person I went to, what, what went to in my mind was Nick Carter, because I can feel for the parents, but because I've lost two siblings as well, because Nick not only lost Aaron, um, a couple of weeks ago, but a couple of years ago, I think about, I'm not sure what year, but um, a few years ago, Nick also lost a sister uh, from drug abuse. So as I was thinking of, of Aaron's death and his sister's what his sister is Wesley's death. I was also thinking of my brother's death, my brother Joel, and, and my sister Sharon. So when I'm thinking that although I am no, I am nowhere near as rich as Nick Carter, I'm on government assistance, I live in a um, an apartment with attendant care, and our lives from the outside are totally different. Um, I need I need help uh, getting dressed in the morning and all of that stuff. And you know, um, and here he is, a part of one of the biggest boy bands in the world. But still, no matter what differences life has thrown us in the way we live, like, he has two kids, I have no kids, I'm in a wheelchair, he's in a body, he's been, uh, he's been having a professional career, career in music for years, and... Um, I've been wanting to break into the entertainment industry, whether it be uh, songwriting, whether it be playwriting, whether it be um, my novels for years, but haven't got there. But despite all our elder differences, the fact that we lost two siblings and the fact that life dealt us kind of the same blow because no matter our financial statuses, our color differences or whatever, 
that that says that life is no respecter of persons. Humans may be, and the way we deal with things may be, but life itself is no respecter of persons. It doesn't care whether you're white, whether you're black, whether you're Latino, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, whether you're some other um, gender. Life doesn't care about that. It rains on the just and the unjust. And if we can strip ourselves of the labels and of the whole things that we put on ourselves, like the cultural things and the whole um, uh, financial status and whether we're whether we're Indian, whether we're black, whether we're Asian, whether we're a woman, whether we're a man, um, we would see that we're all the same in the circle of life um, as no respect of persons. That respect of persons comes from human beings and human logic. And the Lord is calling us today, wherever we sit in our lives, to celebrate the circle of life, to celebrate that life, life treats everyone the same, not humans, or we might not react the same way, but we all feel, we all cry, we all we all, do, we all do the same thing, but we have different reactions. And the Lord is calling us today to celebrate that circle of life and to embrace our differences and celebrate those differences. And remember that, that life in its circleness comes around to everybody. So that's why we can't judge people. Because if we judge people, one day that same thing will happen to us. And we don't know how we'll react. Well, we could turn up our nose at something we don't struggle with, but be careful because that thing you're not struggling with or dealing with, and you're turning up your nose at the way that that person is dealing with it might come back, will come back in, in some way, shape, or form. So that's why we need to live a life of compassion. We need to live a life of understanding. We need to live a life of love because we don't know what, from what moment to the next when, when we will be called upon in life circle to deal with that same issue. Now, the circumstances may be different, but the underlying issues may be the same. What humans need to understand is that the, the details of how you deal with an issue, how you react with an issue, are different, but the underlying issue the symptoms may be different but the cause is the same so some people may react to anger like some people may shut down when they're angry go really really quiet and go really passive aggressive and not really say anything but they're boiling inside and some people may just blow up. The symptoms are different, but the emotion is the same. And underneath anger, it's fear, disappointment, frustration. So anger itself is a symptom for what's really going on. That's a side note, by the way. And I can sense the Lord saying, celebrate the circle because 
You don't know what's coming for you next. You don't know what the circle of life will bring to you next. Or you don't know what the circle of life will bring to another person. So how dare we judge people? How dare we think we are somehow superior and better because we might know the Lord a bit and they might not, or we might know something that they don't know, so we scoff at them. And the Lord is saying to appreciate and celebrate the circle of life. And celebrate not not only the um, and be aware that not only the bad stuff will come back to you, but if you celebrate the good things in people's lives, that good thing that's happening to that person, if your celebration is genuine will come to you as well and it will just it's your turn so everybody knows i'm single but in if you didn't know i'm single uh and that's not an invitation for you to send me facebook posts uh so i know i hate that just don't do it don't send me facebook messages don't do that unless you have something really good to say about my surname or whatever. Just don't send me pickup posts. I don't read them. I throw them away. And I won't answer them either. Um, but aside from that, um, when you... Okay, so I'm single. So instead of when I see a person that said, I just got engaged or got married or had a baby. Um, I celebrate that because the more I celebrate them, the more I look at, I look at it. So when it's my turn, and it will be my turn at some point, they'll celebrate me and and God is storing up all those times when I said to a person, can, and I was genuinely happy for that person. Um, God will store up all those times, and I believe that in that God is preparing someone special for me, someone handcrafted for me, so I don't get jealous. When someone gets married and I don't, I get celebratory because I know the, the circle of life is no respecter of persons. And what's happening good for them will happen to me. But if I act all jealous, oh, why is that person getting married? Why is that person having a baby? Why is that person getting engaged? It's only been a few months. Um, it probably won't come to me as easily, but I'm celebrating that person because I know what it's like being single. I know what the lonely nights are like, so, for, for me anyway, so I celebrate that person, that their, that their time of being alone, um, is over and that they find, found the person to grow together with. The same, the same is true when a person says they're getting divorced. I cry with that person. I don't judge that person and say, divorce is a sin. Why are they getting divorced? Listen, you don't know what's going on in somebody's home or somebody's life. I, I, I saw an entertainment tonight recently that, uh, uh, Tia Mowry is getting divorced after 14 years and instead of saying why is she getting divorced why is she doing this I'm praying for her that God walk her through this time of separation 
going to teach her what she needs to know. Why she's getting divorced is none of my business. My business is to just pray for her and wish her and her kids well um, through this difficult time. And I think because if I judge her, if I get married and happen to, to go through that in my marriage, um, that, that's going to not be so good. So I just kind of um, see with people and I try not to judge people because who knows, it may, it may be coming from me next. And when it comes to, to, to for me, I would want people to treat me the way I'm treating them. Does it always happen that way? No. But it, it will make me right with the Lord and it will make me right with myself. So that's why, I, that's why it's important to treat people the way you feel being treated because you don't know what's coming up from moment to moment in your life. Do you think last year at this time Nick Carter knew his brother was going to die? No. Do, do you think that last year at this time um, Tamara Tamara knew that she was going to get divorced? No, she didn't. But the circle of life hits us all. And de- how dare we judge people? Because that's not what we would do. We're not in that situation. We don't have their struggles. We don't have their personality. We don't know their pain. So what we need to do is put ourselves in the person's shoes and understand that the circle of life will hit us in some way. The symptoms may be different. But um, that same thing will hit us in some way. We'll go through some kind of pain. We'll go through joys. We'll go through a lack of faith. And we'll go through lack of love. We'll go through self-esteem issues. We'll go through confidence issues. We all go through the same things. The symptoms are different. But the underlying issue is the same. And whatever your symptoms are, that those are just symptoms, not the underlying issue. Um, but the Lord is saying, bring that issue to me. The Lord is saying, take off the mask. Yes, the circle of life comes to us all, but it's important when we have these underlying issues to deal with the issue not just the symptoms when you go to the doctor um so sometimes at the doctor you have symptoms but they if they just treat the symptoms the issue comes back and but if they go down deep and do surgery they will treat not only the symptoms, but the issue. And the issue will not come back if you treat it. Same thing as the natural, same thing as the emotional. Too many of us are treating symptoms and not underlying issues. And then we're wondering why this issue is showing up. In the same way, the Lord's saying, it's time to treat the issue. It's time to go down deep and do surgery. He said, it's time for you to let me, as your spiritual surgeon, go down deep and deal with those issues. You may need help. You may need therapy to deal with those issues. You may need medication to deal with those issues. You may need some kind of other help, like books or seminars to deal with those underlying issues. But you need to deal with the issue, not just the symptoms, because the issue is preventing you from having 
uh, successful life. Successful in that way, I mean the life that God has planned for you. Because the, the Lord has, um, has amazing plans for you. But you're too busy dealing with too many issues to see it. And not dealing with the under... You're too busy dealing with the symptoms and not the underlying issue of, of what's really going on. So, you get into a relationship. Things are great, but when it comes to commitment, you run because you don't feel you don't feel you're worth being committed to. And that relationship breaks up and then you get into another relationship. And it's great for a while, but when the person wants commitment, you run. And then you run straight into the arms of another person. So you're not dealing with your commitment issues. You're not dealing with the fact that your parents got divorced. And you're scared uh, when it gets too deep to just deal with the relationship. You're all right when it comes to sex and dating, but when it comes to dealing with the issue of your commitment phobia because your parents, you're not dealing with it. Well, and that issue is preventing you from having a relationship with a person, or even that uh, issue could be preventing you from having a relationship with yourself or with God, any kind of relationship at all, at all. People have issues that are preventing them from having a relationship with God. They're scared to get that close with God because they're afraid that he will hurt them. They're afraid because of what they've been through. They're afraid that he will hurt them. And no matter how many times you read the Bible, no matter how many times you hear that God is love, no matter how many times that you know um, in, your, in the innermost part of your spirit that God will never let you down, no matter how many sermons you hear, about the life that God wants for you. That issue with God is preventing you from having a relationship with him. So no matter how many sermons you watch and say, you say, um, Lord, I want you in my life and you accept him and things are going well, but something happens and then you drop again and then it becomes a cycle. The reason why you're having so much problem is you're, you're only dealing with the symptoms. Like the sermon was um, the, the medication to deal with the symptoms. But you have to go deeper to deal with the issue to find out what's blocking you from a relationship with God. Why do you go, why do you get saved every Sunday? Why do you watch this preacher and that preacher and you know you say a prayer or you contact their online service to help you get um, get on a relationship with Christ and then you kind of fall there for a while but something happens you get mad at God you don't talk to him or you just say forget it I'm done but you never you deal with the symptoms but not the issue you need to go down deep and deal with the issue and sometimes you may need a surgeon, you may need a therapy surgeon, or you may need a medical surgeon if it's a medical issue. Um, the Lord said, do not be afraid to deal with the symptoms and the underlying issue that is causing the symptoms so that the underlying issue 
does it come back again? Sometimes uh, the underlying issue will manifest in different ways. But this, but the symptom, like, so the symptoms will be different. It's still fear, but instead of fear in a relationship, you're dealing with fear, fear that your your family will leave or that this friend will leave. So the underlying issue is fear, but you're you're dealing instead of a romantic relationship, you're dealing with a friendship where you're, you're afraid to be vulnerable because you're afraid that this person will leave you. And instead of a uh, family member or a romantic relationship, you fear it could be that God will leave you. So you just sing the worship songs, you come to church, but you're not dealing with the underlying issue of fear. Whether it be fear that your friends will leave you, a uh, romantic partner will leave you, or God will leave you. Although you heard them say, oh, Jesus will never leave you or forsake you. You're like, how do I know that? And the Lord is calling you to deal with not just the symptoms. Not just the cough or the cold, but the Lord is calling you to deal with the bronchitis that is starting. Because sometimes um, symptoms are, are an indication that there's a deeper problem that there's that is starting. And if you don't deal with the underlying small issue, it will grow and grow. And the Lord wants to stop it at the root today. Thank you, Lord, for helping us deal with our issues and giving us an understanding of how the circle of life works in our lives. In Jesus' name, cover us with your spirit. Cover us with your grace. Cover us with your love. Do surgery today. Heal us in the name of Jesus. Okay, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.
Alright guys, I will see you later.